Hi, Brick Barry, I'm back here, and today we are going to go back and do an in-depth analysis of this set, the Beatles Yellow Submarine, released um, late last year, and it still has a pretty long shelf life left, I believe. We're probably looking at uh, another six months on the shelves, so we better get into some numbers. Let's get started. So, back in 1966, the Beatles were on top of the world. They were the super band of their day. Uh, in 1966, their earnings were $8.8 .8 million that year. In today's dollars with inflation, that would be $78 million if they're around today doing the same thing. Um, yeah, that's a lot of money. And if you think that that was ancient history, I have news for you. Uh, last year on iTunes alone, uh, their songs were downloaded a billion times. This band is as relevant, almost as relevant today as it was back in 1966. So huge fans, a huge fan base, a lot of money. So a really good sign for uh, this set. The Lorian Time Machine was released in 2013. This was that home run set we're going to kind of compare it to. Um, Back to the Future has a big fan base that I think is surprised a lot of people. Myself, I'm a huge fan of the franchise. This set was only a short shelf life. Its retail price was $34. Current value is $116. Parts value is $69. But this set has um, almost tripled in the two years it's retired, which usually doesn't happen. But again, it's a great build, a great set, great price point. Everything is just a, the perfect storm. Actually cheaper for you to part this out yourself than buying it sealed in the box. So what that means for investors is that the DeLorean is actually selling at plus 66% of its parts value. This is a very high number. It even actually is higher than the Hogwarts Castle set we looked at um, in our previous video. That's good news. So how does that apply to the Beatles Yellow Submarine? Well, let's take a look at it and again, both sets are comparable in about the same uh, same price point, the same piece count. Uh, they're not big sets, but they're both tied to very popular themes. And I would say the Beatles is probably even a bigger fan base than, than the uh, Back to the Future franchise. So as always, we have four minifigures. Um, they look fantastic. And Lego did a great job of, I think, reflecting... Um, the uh, portraying these figures and making them look like the actual characters, John, Ringo, Paul, and George. So great job there. The minifigs will help drive this set. I would not be shocked to see these minifigures shooting up there in that $30, $40 price range um, within three, four years after it retires. So what we have is um, a parts value on the set is 109, and this is a great spread considering a retail price of 60. So it's almost doubled, the parts value is almost doubling what the retail price is. That's really good, really positive sign. We're happy about that. Two years after retirement, um, we are looking at about a price of about $180 in the set. Um, so basically, I put you at uh, slightly over doubling on this set two years after, which is a really fast. It's fast return on this one. Eight years out, we're looking at uh, $255. So yeah, um, the set's going to it's going to definitely compound out. It's still, I still would say the Disney's castle is probably the, the ultimate in terms of um, pound for pound your value. But as far as smaller sets go, pound for pound, this set is a must buy. So I guess what I'm saying is that if you really can't do a Disney's castle, um, but you have a little bit less to spend on an investment, this might be your, your next best option. Um, it's $60 retail, get it on sale for 20% off around 50. Um, you can see what the numbers are. They look very favorable. I would highly recommend it um, picking one up. So, guys, that is the Brick Baron. Thanks for watching, and I will see you later. Bye.